Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can use the new Weather Kit REST API in your iOS applications. Now, this video is based on the amazing video created by Simon for his own channel, which is all the code. Definitely go ahead and subscribe to Simon's cha channel uh, because he was the one, at least the first one that I saw online that was able to figure out that how to actually use the weather restful API with the weather kit. So definitely check out his channel. And if you want to definitely check out his video, it's gonna show you how you can do the same thing uh, for node applications or using node applications. And you can see over here that He's using like template literals and all the uh, HTML to display the data. So if you're interested in web development, definitely check out Simon's uh, channel, which is called All the Code. So let's go ahead and start from the very beginning as what do you have to do to get the weather API working, the weather restful API. Okay, so I have created a simple Swift UI application in Xcode. I'm using Xcode 14, but since we're using WeatherKit RESTful API, you don't have to use Xcode 14. You can use Xcode 13, and you can use it with a UI kit application also, all right? So from this point, you don't really have to do anything in the app itself. We just created the project. The main things that you're gonna set up will be on the developer portal. So let's go jump onto the developer portal and see that what things we need to set up to get it working. Okay, so let's go to developer portal. So developer.apple.com and go to account. And now I'm looking at my developer portal. Let's go to certificates, IDs, and profiles. Over here, we will go to identifiers. Now, if your app name is weather app or any app name that you selected, uh, and if you don't see the name of your app over here, which you may not, then you will have to use this one to create the identifier, all right? Now, since this is not the first time I'm using this, uh, my weather app should be available somewhere over here. So let's see if we can find out the weather app that I created and we can see the ID of the weather app. That's the important part, that the identifier is right there, okay? If I click on the identifier, which you should do, so make sure you click on it, we can see all the details, all the different capabilities and all the different app services that this particular weather app is using. Um, make sure that the weather kit is checked. Okay, and let's see what else we are going on. And in the app services, we also have weather kit as enabled, access to the Apple weather service. So these are the different things that you need to make sure that you have checked. Okay, let's go back now and also make sure that you have handle of your team ID. We will be needing that later on. Let's go back to the identifier and let's go ahead and jump into keys. Now, you can see that I have multiple keys created over here. Um, so make sure that you add a key. So let's go ahead and add a key. And I'm gonna enter some name for the key. So let's say my weather key. Since I have already created the maximum number of keys, it will not allow me to do that. But in your case, since this is the first time you're creating a key, uh, you should be good, meaning you should be able to check mark weather kit, and then you should be able to press the continue button. Now, after you press the continue button is one of the most important steps, which is you have to download the private key. So since I already have the keys, and let's see if I can actually delete a key. I don't know if there's a possibility. I can revoke it probably over here. Let's go ahead and revoke this key. Okay, and let's see if I can actually create another key for you. There we go. And I'm gonna call this my weather key. Probably give it a much better name than that. 
and I'm going to select weather kit. I'm going to say continue. Okay, that's all fine. I'm going to say register. And this is the most important part. Don't say done yet. Okay, that's the important part. You have to make sure that you're downloading your key. That's the most important part. So let's download the key and save it somewhere secure. So probably put it in your last pass or your uh, secure Dropbox or something because you will be needing that key. Also, you will be needing the key ID, which you can handle it. I mean, if you go back to the keys and click on the new key, you can see the key ID. So that's not a big deal. But now since you can see that I've already downloaded the key, I cannot download it again. So that's why make sure when you download the key, you are using it correctly, all right? Okay, so I think that's pretty much it, what we are going to do on the developer portal. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to use our own server to authenticate against the WeatherKit RESTful API and then get the information from the WeatherKit RESTful API, which means the current weather. So we have a lot of different ways of creating our own server, but uh, since I know JavaScript, Node, and Express.js, we're just going to use that approach. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you're not using Node or Express and you're using maybe Vapor or you're using Django or ASP.NET or Ruby on Rails, the steps will exactly be the same, all right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called, let's call it weather app server. I'm going to go inside that particular folder and initialize my node project. This assumes that you have already installed node. If you have not installed node, then you have to go to nodejs.org or whichever the node website is, download the latest version. Okay. So I've created a very basic node project. It doesn't really do much right now. You can see that it doesn't even have a JavaScript file or anything. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have certain route or an endpoint uh, that can return weather information. But before we do that, we have to uh, authenticate our keys and everything that we have been doing. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm gonna create a new file called app.js. In the package.json, you can see that I've already updated the main file. I'm just saying that my main file will be app.js, which I just added. And the app.js doesn't really have anything. Well, I can't really work with Node alone. Well, I can, but I don't want to because I want to install Express. So let's go to the terminal and say npm install Express. After installing Express, I will also install JSON Web Token, which is going to allow me to create and sign that token. And once the token is signed, then we can send it to the WeatherKit RESTful API. It will get authenticated and it will return us the weather information. Okay, so now we are back in our app.js. The first thing I'm gonna do is require a couple of different things. We will require Express, JSON Web Token FS for reading a file directory, Axios so that we can make a request to the Weather API, and now we're creating an instance of the Express. Next, I need to get access to the private key. Remember private key that you downloaded, hopefully you have downloaded from developer.apple.com and I told you to put it in a very safe place. Well, now we need to get that key. Now, I've already downloaded the key, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. Let's go, go back to the app.js, and now we can load that private key. We only have to load this once, not for every single request, so that's why I'm just gonna put it right there. At this point, we haven't even started our server, so in Node and Express, it's pretty simple to start the server. Let's go ahead and run the server by saying node app.js, or you can use nodemon app.js, but then you will have to make sure that you have installed nodemon. So I'll just take it easy and I'll just install run node app.js. So now our server is running. 
Next step, we need to create a get URL. App.get. Over here, you can do anything you want. I mean, you can say get weather and all that stuff. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like this. So this means it's kind of like a root URL, which is going to map to localhost 8080, and that's it. It's going to get access to the request as well as the response. And now we can go ahead and utilize the URL that Apple has provided to us in their documentation. I will add that link right there in the description. You can see that the URL takes a couple of different things. The URL is taking the language, so we're just passing en for English. Other thing that the URL is taking is the latitude, longitude, and the data set. The data set, if you don't provide, then it's not really going to return you anything. So basically, I'm saying that I want the, I want to, uh, you know, get the current weather. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and create the headers, and that's the important part. So let's go ahead and do that. Constant headers, and. We can call this configuration because this is a kind of like a configuration that you're passing, which can contain headers. So I'm just going to say headers. And the headers is the important part. The key will be authorization or the property name, and it must be that. And the value will be bearer, and then you will inject the token. So if you have ever done JWT, or JWT authentication, which is JSON Web Token Authentication, you always have to send in a bearer Bearer simply means that I'm the bearer of the JWT token. Once we have created this configuration, now we can go ahead and uh, just perform the request. So I'm going to go ahead and say axios dot get URL and passing in the configuration. In JavaScript, you can also use async and await. So I'm just going to put await all over here and make sure that my function over here is async. And we are going to get the result. Let's go ahead and simply print out the result. We're not going to return the result. We're simply going to print out the result just to see what the result is. But we still need to return something. So I'm just going to go ahead and say hello in this case. All right. Now let's go ahead and stop the server and run it again because we have modified the code. Now, since this is a GET request, we should be able to just perform this in a browser. So let's get our browser ready. There we go. And go to localhost 8080. That's it. Hmm. Well, it's saying token is not defined. So somewhere over here, the token is not defined. Well, where is this variable coming from? And that's the most important part that we didn't do we need to make sure that the token is there, right? So let's go and create a token. Token will be created using JWT.sign. That's why we imported JWT, which stands for JSON Web Token. There are a couple of different things we need to pass. The subject, which doesn't really that much make sense, but we can simply pass in the subject with our bundle identifier or our name of our application. The second part is the private key. And we're going to just pass in the private key, which we have loaded on line number seven. And the third part is the most important part. This is the object. And this is basically uh, the video that I was talking about initially, Simon's video that actually helped us out with this, is a couple of different things that we need to pass in over here. JWT ID. Now, what exactly is this JWT ID? Well, it will begin with your team ID. Yes, your actual team ID that you can get from developer.apple.com. So let's go ahead and see where we can get the team ID. If we go back, where is it? Okay, over here probably. Developer.apple.com. You should be able to see team ID somewhere. So certificate and blah, blah, blah. You can actually see the team ID right there. That's the one you need. Okay, so in our JWT ID, we will add team ID dot 
the identifier for your app, com.adamsharp.weather app, because that is a bundle identifier for my app. Next up is issuer. Who is the one who is issuing it? Well, in that case, it is also the team ID. Then expires in. Expires in, and we're just going to pass in one hour. Next is the key ID. Now, where should we get this key ID? Well, let's go to identifier. Well, let's go to keys and whichever one key that you want to use. Now, I think I created the My Weather key, but uh, I'm using everything related to the old API stuff. So I will use this one. But in your case, you should use the correct key, all right? So I'm just going to copy that one. There we go. The next is, is algorithm. So we're going to use the ES256 algorithm. There we go. And the final one is header. And in the header, now you're going to pass in the same exact thing which we have in our JWT ID. So just copy it from there and pass it. Great. Okay. Now let's uh, probably see over here what's going on. Let's make it over here. Let's clear out the terminal and run it again. Okay, looks like it's running, running at least trying to run. And now we can try to go to localhost 8080 again. And we get hello, which because this is what we're sending, but the most important part is the console. Look at the console. You can see that we're getting a lot of stuff over here. So this means that this result that we're getting contains a couple of different properties. And we are mostly interested in the data. And the reason that we're interested in the data is if you look at the data, it contains the current weather that you want it. It has the temperature. It has, you know, all the stuff that you actually want. And I believe this temperature, it looks like this temperature might be in uh, Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. All right. So now instead of returning hello, we can return result dot data. Let's see what we get back. And I'm going to again start, start the server, stop the server, and going to refresh this page. And now we get the information that we needed. So this means that if I go to this URL, which is localhost 8080, which is running on my machine, I will be able to get the result for the current weather. And the reason I'm getting current weather is that I have specified over here current weather. If I was saying that, hey, give me the hourly weather updates, then I should get a different kind of a response back. All right. So now we are ready to move on to the iPhone side, meaning your iOS application side. We already have our server, which actually returns you all the stuff that you need. The only thing we need to do is to go get this information, get the weather information and everything, and then display it in an our iPhone app. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we are inside our weather app. If we look at the response, it does contain a lot of stuff. Now, I don't really need all of this stuff. Um, probably I need the humidity, which is 53% and I need the temperature, which is 35, and looks like it might be in uh, Celsius. It doesn't really matter. We just want to display it. So we need the humidity, and we will need the temperature. All right. But before we do that, we need to create our DTO objects or our JSON model objects in our file, meaning in our application. So how do we do that part? So let's move on to our application over here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called models. Let's add a new model. We will call it weather. Okay. Now we're getting a response and this is the important part because the actual response is inside a key or a property called current weather. So we can make this like weather response as well as the weather. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a struct and I will call it weather response. That's the whole response, which is decodable. And I will also create probably a struct called weather, which will also be decodable. And in this, I'm only interested in only a couple of things, temperature and humidity. So let's get the name exactly right so that we don't have to provide any custom keys or coding keys. And I will put it as this. And for humidity, humidity, and that will be double. Now over here, I'm just going to call this current weather, and that will be the weather. Okay. All right. Next up, we are going to create some sort of a service that is going to allow me to populate all of this information. So let's go ahead and add not a new file, but probably a new folder. There we go, new group. Uh, call it services. And I would simply call it weather service. Now, if you are targeting iOS 16, then obviously then you should use weather kit and the weather kit client side API instead of using the RESTful model. But if you are targeting your React application or your Flutter application or Android and you want to get the weather, then this can be a great way too. Class weather service. And I will simply call a function called get weather. Now, when we are creating this function, there are a couple of different things that we that we need, right? Uh, we will get a URL, so guard let weather URL, which will be URL. And for now, we can just simply pass in the URL that we had, which is localhost 8080. And we know that if we go over there, it's going to trigger our own server and it's going to give us some sort of a result back. And we will, if there's some problem, then we can say network error bad URL. And where is that coming from? Well, we can go ahead and create enum, which can be a network error, which is of type error. And it will have a case, which is bad URL. Okay. Since we're using Swift 5.x or 5. Point something, which actually does support async and await, we probably should be able to do also make it an async. And it can also throw. And it's going to return us the weather. Well, not an array of weather, just the weather itself. Currently, the function doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really return you anything. So this will be a good time to perform the request. URL session dot shared dot data. And this is the one where we can actually pass in the actual URL. We have the URL, which is the weather URL. Try await. This is going to return us a couple of different things, right? It's going to return us the data and it's going to return us, I believe, the response from that data. Over here, you can check if the response is successful. And after that, you will have to decode it. So JSON decoder dot decode. And then what are you going to decode? Well, in this case, we are decoding to a particular type, which I believe is called weather response dot self and data will be decoded. Once the data is decoded, we can then return the weather. So let's just call it weather response. And finally, we will return weather response dot current weather, which we know that it will be a weather. We never really use the response part of it. So you can kind of like skip it if you want to. Okay. So this is fine. Now the question is, where would you call this particular service? And the place where you will call it will be a view model if you're using the MVVM approach. So let's go back and I'm going to add a view model. I will call it weather view model. We will create a class called weather view model, which will be an observable object. Okay. Now the weather view model can be, and it is an observable object, 
and this is the one that gets actually populated, right? Now you can call it weather view model. I usually like to create some sort of a weather container or not calling it like a weather list or anything, but I would call it like a, at a much higher level. Keeping things simple, let's go ahead and continue. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a function called populate weather, that's fine. And we can make this async function, I believe. Now over here, we can use the web service, which was just called the weather service that we just created. So weather service dot get weather. And this is going to give us the weather information. So let's go ahead and get the weather information. This is async service. So if we will await for it. Hopefully it's gonna return us the weather information. All right. And this can also blow up. So we will do try await and we will try to catch the error if there is any error and try to print it out. Okay, so once we get the weather information, we want to assign it to something so that we can display it on the screen, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and probably create some of these things like a publish property. Publish property, this can be a, we should call it temperature probably. Temperature, double, we will initialize it with nothing. And we'll start with the temperature and we can copy this and just use the humidity also. Humidity, okay? Now, once we get the weather, we should be able to assign it. So we can say temperature equals to weather dot temperature. And the humidity equals to weather dot humidity. Okay, I think we did use all of this stuff. Not sure what it's complaining about, but here we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create an instance of weather view model in our view and then eventually display it. So let's go to state object private var vm, which is of type weather view model. And we still have to call the function, the populate weather function, remember? So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it right over here inside the task. And I will await for it, vm.populate weather. Once it is populated, we can try to display it. So I can say vm.temperature. And for saving time, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this I think if in your actual application, you should use those measurement APIs uh, to, to put the weather in a correct form. Let's see if this works or will it, here we go, actually it's uh, working correctly. Here we go, we got it displayed. Um, we also wanted to display the humidity. So let's just call it temperature over here, temperature. And we can copy this one out and we can call it humidity, vm.humidity and 0.52, you can multiply by whatever 100 and you know display the correct humidity and whatnot. Uh, so that should be fine. There we go, 52% is the humidity. Now again, the temperature, you can see that it's showing currently, I believe it's in Celsius. Um, maybe it is showing us in Celsius because I didn't pass the correct language. That is a possibility over here. Um, you can see that I am passing EN over here. Maybe it has to be some other language, uh, EN as in USA, uh, to, to say that we should be getting the actual weather uh, in Fahrenheit and not you know, some other country like a European country which are using Celsius, all right? But anyways, you can see it's working. And this is how you will create your weather application using the Weather RESTful API. Hope you like it. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. You can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, including MVVM Design Pattern and Swift using the UIE Kit Framework. I have a 26-hour course on Swift UI 
and also programming Mac OS. You can see that this has 4.8, really good rating, and also recipe code. So I have a lot of these different courses that are available to you, and check out the links in the description. Hope you like it. Thank you so much.